guys welcome back to the channel we've got the episode seven of the fulham career mode we start with the first episode of the day which is a massive game against bristol city at craven cottage and i believe they beat us last time in the episode so it's gonna be a very very difficult task to try and beat them this time we've got a very strong team out today we've got gazaniga tete aradabayo tanganga robinson uh, dembele reed wilson anguisa mela and mitrovic in the team so without further ado, in the seventh minute, Mitrovic gets his first chance of the game and on his strong foot, he puts us 1-0 up. Honestly, this man is absolutely phenomenal. Going for the championship record goals this episode and I can see him getting it, honestly. He's already on a lot of goals this season. He only needs 32 to beat Tony's record. 32 or 33, I believe it is, so I think he can do it. Harrison Reed then picks up the ball, plays it through to Mellor and honestly... 2-0 up in 25 minutes against Bristol City. There's not much better for us to get. Not many better teams in the league, but it's a very good start. And uh, our old enemy, Semenyo, picks up the ball on the left for Bristol City, plays it into James and to Fernandez, And it's a very nice play through to Andreas Weiman. But Gazaniga, I know I might say, you might say, oh, Tom, it was an open net. He shouldn't really be saving it, but... Mm, he doesn't really react very well to it. I don't really like him, to be honest. And then again, we have another chance with Naki Wells. He pulls the ball back and we do very well to clear it. Harrison Reed plays the ball out and we do very well to clear the ball out for half-time. Not a bad half in general, but nice to be winning 2-1. Bristol City are a very good side in real life and a very difficult team. But what is that? Paolo Gazaniga, come on. Use your hand, sunshine. If you watch that again, you'll see how bad that bit of goalkeeping was. I'm thinking Rodak from now on. Very, very disappointing from uh, our number one, Gazaniga. But Mitrovic in the 59th minute, look at that. Any foot you want, that man puts it in the top corner. The league is so easy for him in the game and in real life. I don't think I've ever seen a better striker in the championship than Mitrovic. He just honestly cannot stop scoring. But then uh, Zambanguisa picks up the ball and guess who's there again? Mitrovic for his hat-trick. He scored three goals in 70 minutes, puts 4-2 up. Bristol City have no reply to him at all. And that's an easy, easy goal for Mitrovic. And he scores again. I can't even keep up with the amount of highlights and how quickly they're happening. Because Mitrovic doesn't stop scoring. So, uh, no, it's another finish for Mitrovic. And it's nice to see that we can uh, absolutely annihilate any team in the league. Then in the 77th minute, he scores again. He scored five in one game. When I said earlier that he's going to go for the championship record goal scorer, I didn't mean in one game. Genuinely, absolutely superb footballer, Alexander Mitrovic on the FIFA. So, uh, easy win for us at home at Craven Cottage. 6-2 against Bristol City. Another game with six goals. And that is fantastic for us. All the praises on Mitrovic. Five goals in one game. An absolutely world-class talent, Alexander Mitrovic. The top score in the league by an absolute country mile. And as we say, it's all about hard work and we're going to win the league, aren't we? Let's be honest, not getting ahead of ourselves. We're definitely going to win the league. No team in the league can cause us any problems because we've got Mitrovic up front. Our next game at the Stoke City SE Stadium away from home. Very interesting stadium name from Stoke nowadays. Uh, but the team is as follows. We drop the goalkeeper, Gazaniga, for Rodak. Christian Brown coming at full-backs. Uh, Chalaba comes in for Reed, And then we keep the usual front four because they're irreplaceable. Every single one of them is fantastic in this team lineup. So, in the 23rd minute, Stoke get a chance. Click. Oh, look at that for an effort. And Powell heads into an empty net. But it's offside. Very, very lucky break for us. Rodak was nowhere near that one. He, he didn't have any right to be, to be honest. So... Nice for us to get off the hook a little bit there, but Zambo and Greaser picks up the ball and we try and play out from the back a little bit. Cyrus Christie finds Harry Wilson in the 25th. We're still going from a free kick from the offside goal they scored. And Mitrovic has the ball lofted to him and Davies cannot keep that one out. Wow. Does the Son celebration and he is unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable, Mitrovic. In the 35th, Dembele plays a lovely ball through. And Wilmot is held off and it's another finish past Davies. 
You just can't stop him. You literally cannot stop Alexander Mitrovic. He set, he scores every single shot he needs. That puts us 2 0 up and a very, very good start to the episode for us so far. As uh, Stoke try and come on the attack. They have to wait until the 50th minute to get their me next major chance. And look at this for a block from Adarabayo. He looks sort of like stumbles. The, the animation is he falls into the ball and it's it's just a nice block in the end. In the 59th, they do get another chance. And Campbell makes no mistake. Tyrese Campbell, a very good player in real life. Finishes past Rodak. There's no saving that as I bring off Mitrovic. He's very, very tired. But honestly, no saving that from Rodak. And look at that for a double save. He really wants Gazaniv's shirt, doesn't he? Definitely wants a number one spot. As we uh, still lead the game 2-1. Until then. 2-2. Honestly, I don't know why I do these highlights like this. It's so difficult to keep up with why I'm trying to do commentary over the top. But 2-2, two, two, and I can't see us winning this game. I know I said no team going to cause us problems, but very, very good team. But straight from kickoff in the 66th minute, Harry Wilson picks up the ball. He's waiting for a bit of movement, I think. Sam Wangisa plays a 1-2 with Ricky J. Jones. Plays a through ball. Takes a lucky deflection. Wilmot again, but look at this for a finish. Voice break there. Absolutely fantastic finish from Zambo Anguisa. I'm not sure how he scored that. It's a lucky deflection, to be honest. But look at this. He sort of, sort of angles it over, over Davies. I'm not sure if Davies should be doing better or what. But that was the final action of the game in a 3-2 victory at the Stoke City FC Stadium. Good result from the boys, to be honest. Very nice to see. Very nice to see from the boys. And uh, I'm very happy with that one. So we're going to the... FA Cup fourth round at home at Graham Cottage against Preston. And uh, we have a nice little team lined up so far. We have Rodak in goal. We have Christy Congolo, Mawson and Brian as the defence. Uh, Chalibur, Seri, Kearney, Deckard Overbreed, Cavallero and Ricky J. Jones as the strikers. So, decent team for the Cup. The first highlight of the game comes in the 35th minute. We're trying to win the ball back off Preston, but it's very, very difficult. As they, uh, it's really difficult to get hold of anyone who's at part of the AI in the 37th minute. They do manage to find a way to score. No defending that one, to be honest with you. When they, they just retain the ball so well sometimes, it's just one touch passing. Mawson's nowhere near them. I don't know how he can be, to be honest. But uh, in the 82nd minute, we're trying to press them, getting a little bit frustrated. And that Seb van der Berg, what is he doing? Makes an absolute howler of a mistake. And Bobby Deckard over Reed. Puts it away very comfortably. And we do take, a little, uh, take the draw back and manage to get another chance towards the end of the game. The youngster Jasper plays it to Cavallero and he misses. Everson makes a very good save. Sort of hits him in the face. But we've got a replay in the cup and I really don't like cup replays. I don't really see the point in them sometimes. I understand why they have them in real life, but I mean, the season is already long enough as it is. But, I mean, I don't think I'm going to play the next cup game. I know for a fact I don't play the next cup game. I sim it, but still disappointed not to beat Preston. I'd have rather lost, and then I'd have been like, at least I have to play another game. But uh, still disappointed nonetheless. But we're going to the next game of the episode against Blackpool at home at Craven Cottage. We had a very difficult win against them at Bloomfield Road. But the team again, Rodak, retains his place in goal. And then I think every single player in the team is the team who usually plays, or I usually start. Yeah, usual team we line up with. Harrison Reed still lucky to keep hold of his place after fine performances from Shalaba and Deckard over Reed again. But uh, we're still happy with it. In the 29th minute, though, Meller has a little run on goal, plays the ball, back stick, Harry Wilson heads it over Maxwell, and we go 1 0 up. Very, very good goal. Very, very good goal from the boys. Very happy with that one. And uh, then Blackpool on the next attack. Plays the ball to Lavery and Anderson. Look at that for a finish. No saving that from Marek Rodak. I can't blame him for that whatsoever. On the replay, just see it's a good ball through. Tete's nowhere near it, to be fair. And Rodak has no chance. But then from the following corner, we cross the ball into Mitrovic again. And Maxwell is not got a strong enough hand to it. We go 2-1 up against a very, very difficult to break down Blackpool side, just like they were last time, to be honest. But even though Maxwell does have a very good game this game, he should be stopping that. 
Mitrovic doesn't have much backlift on it and it's uh, not a very good header. Then Dembele goes through on goal. Look at that for a save. I even show the replay on this one because it's such a good save from Maxwell. And look at that. The animation, as I said, was superb. Very good save from the Blackpool goalkeeper. Then Gary Medine makes another good effort on goal and forces another strong wrist from Rodak to keep the score at 2-1. Honestly, this Blackpool team were much, much better defensive than the Bristol team, which I was very surprised about to say how uh, efficient Bristol are usually on this at defending. But Rodak claiming the ball does win us the game. And uh, I'm really happy with Rodak in goal at the moment. Gazaniga can sort of stay where he was because I've got really sick of Gazaniga's sloppy errors he tends to make. And Rodak hasn't made a single one for us yet, so uh, can't really complain about that. And uh, it's another good result for us. Another win. In the press conference, we, again, boost the team's morale. Another good result. 2-1. Very proud of the boys. Very determined, as some would say. But honestly, Blackpool are a very, very difficult opposition this FIFA. And uh, very, very difficult to play against. But as we saw very briefly there, until I made the worst cut known to mankind, I just didn't show enough of that, to be honest. We uh, we tried to bid on Ryan Sessingham and it got rejected very early on. So there wasn't much we could do about it. But ah, it is what it is. We we, re we really wanted some more players. But we, we didn't have enough money. We only had five million to spend, so it doesn't really matter. But we go into the game against Preston. It's already 1-1. I can't really keep up with the commentary I've done. I've done a really poor job of keeping up with it. But still, winning the game 2-1, I didn't want to play it because it gets so boring. I, I really enjoy playing games, but sometimes cup games like this, I just don't want to play. So it is, it is what it is, but still a good result. We, we're through to the fifth round of the FA Cup and you can't really complain. Nice for us to be into the fifth round of a competition because normally we get knocked out straight away like we did in the cup last time. But another nice result for us in the episode and uh, I believe we've got one more game to go. We're just having a quick look at the Youth Academy. Ben Kennedy looks fantastic. The central midfielder. I'm changing him to attacking midfielder. The Irishman, five foot nine. Sadly, no traits, but I definitely think I got to like a 69 rating. So uh, really happy with him. As you can see, we're top of the league though now. Finally caught up with the rest of the pack. We've got a very, very difficult game against Middlesbrough. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen in this one. It's, they're a very, very good side. Very strong opposition. And I'm not really looking forward to playing them. Not going to lie to you. Very, very difficult game coming up. But the team again, Rodak retains his place. It's a usual strong team. And then, literally, I think that's the same team we use every time, apart from Deckard over Reed coming in for Reed as Zambongisa drops back a little bit but Deckard over Reed recently back into the team plays a through ball to Mitrovic 25th minute and what do you think is going to happen he's going to score of course you would bet your house on that. the best striker in the league the best player in the league scores again and I promise I just didn't keep passing ball to him but come on look at him he, do, he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't uh, miss when he has a shot so 30 yards out again he scores again I don't understand how play can be so good, yet 77 rated. But I know I'm in the Championship, but we'll see how he does next season if we get into the Premier League. But a very, very nice finish from Mitro to put us 2-0 up. But Middlesbrough don't last very long and they start to attack with Paddy McNair. And Sporos was a very, very nice finish. Past Rodak, there's not much you could do about that, but it's a good finish from, uh, I think, Slovenian. I'm, I'm guessing he is, but still, unfortunate from the boys. They're cut over Reed. Lovely challenge on him, I thought. And uh, I only, I've only realised watching the replay after Mitrovic scores that Marcus Taverni was playing centre back for Middlesbrough. What the hell is the AI doing? He's a right winger, and they're playing him centre back. I mean, he doesn't have a bad game, but obviously Mitrovic has already scored three, so it doesn't really matter, but it's, it's quite weird to see as uh, Middlesbrough go and score again and we can't really do anything about that. Very difficult to defend against sometimes and they go 2-3 uh, in the game. Crooks scores against us and uh, we have to go again really. But in the 65th minute we're giving him a high press and Deckard over Reed wins the ball. Mitrovic fires it at the goalkeeper and Wilson taps into an empty goal to put us 4-2 up and kill off the game very, very comfortably. 
But very nice from the Welshman to be in the right place at the right time. A very good season for him so far. And again, we've won the game again. Easy. We've won the game already, to be fair. But Mitrovic goes through again. He's four goals. I, I can't even count how many goals he scored this episode. I think it's at least 13 in the league. And he is absolutely exceptional. Absolutely exceptional footballer. 5-2 win. Another four for Mitrovic. And as you see on the match facts, we should have scored more, really. Not through Mitrovic, even though he does have like 25 shots a game. But still, a very, very nice victory again for us. As we see Ben Kennedy as he goes to a cam, what rating is he? He's a 69 rating, as I said he would be. And he needs a call-up to the first team, doesn't he, to be honest. But at the end of the episode, we do see we've gone six points clear after being so far behind. We've really turned around 82 goals in 30 games. That is absolutely immense from us. 34 goals in 28 games from Mitrovic. 16 goals ahead of his closest competitor, Spora, with Miller on 15. The man's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Breaking the goal record in his first season back in the Championship. That's an episode for a title. A title for an episode, sorry. Then Wilson is the top assist with 24 in 25. We've got Mitrovic and Zabongisa both on 9 and Jones on 8. I feel like next season we're going to have to play an ultimate, but I, d I definitely know the Premier League will be a lot harder than this. I know that for an absolute fact, but still very nice for us. And Gazaniga with his five clean sheets, even though after this episode he has been dropped for Rodak. But in the next five games, a home game against Millwall, away game at the Hull City Stadium, then a home game against Huddersfield, a home one against Peterborough, and an away game against Cardiff. So I appreciate you all watching. Thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Catch you in the next one.